I'm at a gypsy. One of the best bikes that I've ever ridden to this day is Michael Lessie's 2012 RMZ 450 race bike. That thing was unbelievable. Really? Unbelievable. Tell me yeah, about it. Yeah, dude. It was... Leave it to Tony Alessi to, to do some crazy shit because uh, <laughs> this bike... <laughs> this I bike not him, only was way. smooth... Uh, have you had him on the show? No, dude. We're doing it real soon. I, as you said that, I need to message him and like lock in the day. I was just with him in Melbourne. Bro, the, we should have... I went up to him in the pits. I've met him a few times before, but... There's so many people I've met in the past that don't connect me to this. And then he's like, oh, pleasure to meet right. you. I'm like, oh, we've actually met before. He's like, that was you? So anyway, we should have started recording as soon as I walked up and introduced myself. Because like, I was like, shut, don't, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't say any of this. All of this save needs it, to get said it. on the podcast because <laughs> you are fucking brilliant. He's like, he's like, I'll bring my Alessi Weeklies. I've got every single Alessi Weekly printed and ordered yeah. in the entire career of Mike and Jeff. Like he is on some shit. And I was like, dude, you're a fucking psychopath, but in the best <laughs> way that you could be a psychopath. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. Like not to get off the subject. This no, is go off topic. I go will off say topic. this. Uh, uh, <laughs> Tony Alessi, I've been around the the Alessis. I mean, they're they're high des. They're in a spare. Yeah, yeah. Victor Tony's Bill. right down the street from my yep. house. So uh, some of I've ridden and trained with Mike and Jeff. Tony Alessi is out at the track, prepping in the des, mind you, like their own facility and, and now Carson Mumford's facility. But four a.m. watering, prepping, getting shit ready. He is a hard working motherfucker. Like. Yes, what he did some weird shit with back in the day, of course. But dude, I'm telling you, you cannot sit here and say that guy didn't give his kids everything that they could have to be successful. He did that. And he's always treated me fair. Sure, he's off his fucking rocker, just like you said. Some of these things <laughs> that he does, like, holy shit, this is insane. But he's always treated me fair, super knowledgeable about the sport. Things that I would never thought he knew about me and my career, he knows. Uh, he knows how to build a motorcycle. Like, when we talk testing, he knows these certain things. Um, I mean, literally, there was there's a piece of desert behind my house that's just... It's just places people go ride and unload and go ride. He literally brought a dozer out there in the middle of a night, dozed this track for Mike, got the water truck, watered this whole track that he dozed in BFE. And it was like you went over this hill and it was like Jesus Christ laid out a, a motorcycle track <laughs> in the desert. And this is where we would meet to go ride. And this is the kind of shit that Tony did for Mike. Uh, several times I have so many stories about Tony and what he's done but you're right man this Suzuki that he had built for Mike that year and Mike was on his way to win that championship he didn't get oh. cleaned out and his knee was dude yeah. like he was shredding that year um, and that bike was a big part of it man I got to ride it and really uh, hone in on what he did and just like you said, there's some weird shit. There was a, 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 a you should ask him this because I don't know what the fuck it was, but <laughs> it was a like a piece of wire hanging off of the frame by the down tube. And when I asked the mechanic, I go, hey, man, what is this like little nubby wire thing like glued onto the frame? Like he's like, oh, I can't talk about that right now. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, bro, we can't talk about that shit. And I'm like, OK. And then I was like, I asked later on and it's some kind of like balances the energy from the earth to the motorcycle. It, it, I mean, I can't make this shit up, dude. It's just weird <laughs> shit that happens with Tony. But the dude is a smart dude and he works his ass off. And even we've had him on the Pulp Show before and he says, look, I am 50 percent less crazy than I used to be because Mike is mellowed out. He's not racing and he really is. He's more down to earth, you know, and he, he has all these girls now. Um, they call them little Cobra, little Cobras are everywhere and they're riding Stasix. And yeah, dude, that would be a great show. If you're going to have the number one show like downloads and views, Tony Alessi would be that show, dude. Dude. Yeah. I mean, stiff competition with Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had. No. I feel like it would be. I think it overtake Rhino. I think it would overtake it. 
it, it probably I, I'd, I'd say you're right and dude even like i got guys that i do jujitsu with that have asked me for six years <laughs> that i've been going into that gym when are you getting Tony Alessi on the fucking podcast? <laughs> like, dude, he is yeah. just... He's, prob- he's probably one of the most, like, eccentric and valuable people to the industry in terms of, like, overall lifetime, like, what he has contributed to motorcycling and, like, not only with, you know, with... Um, with mike as a racer but then i mean he was telling me crazy shit like we started talking about 350s and like the crazy shit he did with mike and and the 350 and now to be a team manager for moto concepts like that's a really legit team like if you ride for moto concepts like you've got a bike that's good enough to to win and then you know jb obviously like helped out so much with show stuff like that's a legit program and even i was talking to him in melbourne and he was like, man, we just, I changed the parts on the fucking minute. The minute that, that the parts need to be changed, they get changed. I don't cut any corners. Like the passion and the attention to detail. Like I say, he's a fucking psycho. But in like, in the way that you yeah. should be a psycho <laughs> when it comes to, you yeah. know, doing doing that job. And and if you look at, at Mike as a athlete, like that's a tiny dude. That's not, you know what I mean? Like that's a, yeah. he is not a super athletic person. You look at a guy like Chase Sexton right. or Jet Lawrence or Eli Tomac, you know, like, oh, did it go out yeah. again? Sweet. Yeah. I, you, you look at like Chase Sexton, you look at Jet, you look at Eli, they're like gnarly athletic dudes, you know? And like for Ricky to right. like, I mean, Ricky was probably a bit similar in that he wasn't like a gnarly athlete, but I think that. There's obviously like something there in those genes, you know, but you look at Mike, like to, to look at that small guy to ride that era of 450 against, you know, some gnarly guys, like just to, to turn that kid into that kind of athlete. And I mean, my, I was like the Michael Lessie era. So when, when, when he was, when he was coming up, we were like pretty much the same age, you know? So it was like him and Villo and those guys, like as I was following the sport, like that was my, that was my first generation that like, I felt like I went pro with those guys, you know? And, uh, yeah. I remember at Steel City, the second time that Alessi rolled up, like Millville was obviously the biggest catastrophe of like a pro debut that you could have but then steel city dude that goes out and puts it on the box on that like a 450 that yeah. tony made it was just insane yep. dude like so the, the athlete yeah, that like, he created was crazy you ask uh like what you said you ask chase to throw a football and then mike alessia throw a football you can guarantee that chase will have a nice spiral and mike would be kind of ugly looking right so yeah. uh same thing like I spent a lot of time with Mike at the house and with his family and uh he's grown up a lot you know and, and I come to that same era like I'm Mike Alessi era you know the I the Ivan Tedesco incident all these things and um I think he hasn't outgrown some of that stuff from the from the public's perception but if you're inside of it a little bit more and you see what the work has been put in with Tony like you can't say that Tony Alessi did not try everything to, to make his kids successful. You know, yeah. some of the decision making, maybe that could have been better. Maybe some of the, uh, um, off the bike brain skills could have been a little bit better in that direction. I think if that was a little bit better then I think the decision making would have been better on the motorcycle. And I think his career goes somewhere different. Mm. Uh, but man, Tony, it just, just some of the things that you said, like he will, he'll get on a bike, he'll go down the road, uh, a quarter mile, wah, 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 come back, wah, wah. yep, it's good, don't worry about it, yep, it's fine, and gives it to Mike. You're like, uh, that's the Tony Alessi dino test, that's what we call it, that's the dino test, so you're good. <laughs> so what what was it like riding that that 450? And do you know, so obviously he's working with Roger DeCosta, so like he's in that, I can imagine that being a fucking nightmare, <laughs> Tony Alessi versus Roger yep. DeCosta, in the direction that an yep. RMZ 450 should go. But like, so how much input did Tony have from what you understand? And then what was that motorcycle like to ride and why was it so good? So at the time, um, the bike that I rode was mostly, like you said, as a, was a Tony Alessi thought. It wasn't anything Roger involved inside this motorcycle. It was mostly just 
what Varner, you know, Terry Varner had, had put together for him. Um, and then also uh, when he was working with Chad at XPR, Chad yep, back yep, then yep. was still doing some yep. stuff for him. Really? Even and, back uh, then? Suzuki you know, that, days? Yeah. Really? So, um, yeah. So back, even back, that was the time they were kind of transitioning to, you know, using some Chad stuff and Varner was here or there, but not really around. Um, and then obviously he's been with race tech for eons. He's still had race tech stuff on it. Um, but it wasn't factory stuff. It wasn't factory suspension. It was a kit level things. And what the bike did was it, it was just so easy to ride. Kind of like when we talk about the 350. it felt light. It was free. Um, it didn't have a lot of engine braking. It never, if I wanted to grab a handful of throttle, it, it did that easily. It didn't squat the bike was really level. It wasn't rigid. I was expecting it to be super rigid like a pro's bike usually is, super firm. But in the world of Michael Essie, his stuff was fairly soft because he likes to feel, you know, the ground. And uh, the bike just cornered so good. I've never been on a motorcycle that you just thought about leaning and it just went whop, right into the rut. Okay, I want to change direction. Oh shit, the berm is blown out, cut down. Rip. It just was so easy to maneuver and felt light. And I've never felt that from, from a Suzuki. So I was so gung ho on Suzuki's after that. I went out and bought one. Really? I went out and got a Suzuki. Cause I think it, I thought, oh man, I want to make it like that. And I never could make it as good as Tony Alessi's RMZ 450. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.